This is your season of grace with your host, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Luke chapter 24, from verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. The decay that was expected was not there. And it happened as they were great, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. This is where our interest lies today. Two men. The scripture says uh, the testimony of, a, of two or three witnesses, a case is established. It was not accidental that in this particular scripture, two men, two men stood by them in shining garments, meaning these are not two men from among them who were afraid, who were wandering, who were lost and confused. These two men are on the shining side of life, meaning they know, they see, they know there is no problem. Tonight, the, the heavenly witnesses that will testify about your own shall appear to your life. Yeah. I just said something. They, perplexed about this, saw two men who stood by them in shining garments. The two men, one by your side and the one by the other side, that need to confirm that God had actually changed your condition before the condition came to be. I pray in the name of Jesus that your eyes will be open to see. Amen. By the way, too many things in life depend on your eyes seeing them. I was looking at the scripture today. Samson, after the jawbone of the donkey, he struck several and killed them. The scripture says he was so thirsty, he almost died, and he cried to the Lord, having given me great victory, will you now allow me to perish? And God opened a hollow of the ground and he saw water. What of if God opened it and he did not see it? He will still be thirsty. So many people live in thirst and die in thirst because they are not able to see. I prophesy tonight, you will see your helper. Because these women saw, the story began from there. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Okay. Your own two men are there. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Can you stand up? Lift up your two hands. I want you to say it. There is separation. My life is not among the dead. My future is not among the dead. My children, my home, my family are not among the dead. Be seated. Has anybody here been in a situation or had, or anybody here has had the experience of 
either regularly, once in a while, or constantly fellowshipping with the dead. In the dream, in trances, even in thoughts. I'm talking about somebody. Either you hear about it or you experience it yourself. A constant interaction with the dead. Sometimes we hear of eating, drinking, talking, sharing. No matter how familiar those dead are, no matter how close they were to you when they were alive, I want to announce to you that it's not a good thing. If you understand me, say, I hear you. If you have that kind of experience of constantly, regularly, even once in a while, having issues with the dead, it's not clean. It's not a good sign. It reveals something deeper. It reveals closeness and fellowship with death. With death. And death is different from life. By this administration of the word tonight, you shall be separated. You see, life is spiritual first before it is physical. It is in the spiritual place that people live. It is also in the spiritual place that people die. Issues of dreams, trances, and all those things, they have effect on the spiritual atmosphere of the life. People eat something in a dream and wake up and have physical, tangible experience. People have a dog bite somebody in the dream and somebody wakes up and sees a mark and blood of dog bites physically. So when you see things in the dream, philosophers and theologians and um, psychologists may tell you that's nonsense. It doesn't make sense. But whether it makes sense to you or not, by the word that says, why do you seek the living among the dead? Which means the living and the dead, they have nothing in common. By the sense of this word, somebody is separated in the name of Jesus. Be seated. God spoke to me today to share with you two things. Death by association and life by association. Death by association and life by association. There are cases that we hear a mother died. After some time, we'll come in a dream and tell the daughter, the children left behind, come, let me take you. Come, let's go. After some time, the children die. Fellowship. Bond. Association. There are many people who die the death that is not their own because of association. And there are people who also live the life they don't deserve because of association. By your association, by sitting here, here tonight, you have given me authority to apply the word of God. And by the way, I've been given authority to apply the word. That is what God does to ministers. So I speak every form of association that is tilting your life towards death. Whether it is financial death, emotional death, marital death, business death, physical death, spiritual death, whatever. I say, why do you seek the living among the dead? I apply this word that you are separated from the dead that hang over you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Lift up your tongue and say, I am separated. Be seated. 
It is a prophetic trumpet I have to announce to you again. That as I speak, it is announced in the spirit wall of your life. And as everything in your life listens, they are responding. Yeah. Your missing objects, you shall see it again. Yeah. An announcement is going for, and it's a trumpet, by the way. So why do you seek the living among the dead? Very briefly, we look at association that brought death to people. Glory to God. The story of Korah Dethan and Abiram in Numbers chapter 16. These guys rallied some other people of like minds and revolted. The scripture said they became insolent and they revolted against the authority of Moses. They told Moses, These people are holy. You have gone too far. The way you lord it over people. Some Korah from Levi and some guys from Benjamin. And God got involved because when God has called a man, he's involved. Don't joke. And God became interested in the case. A contest of fire was arranged. People to bring censers to offer incense. And God says, the one who is of me will be approved and will receive his offering. Long and short, verse 23. Then the Lord said to Moses, say to the assembly, move away. Move away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abira, move away. Separate yourself. Is it, that means don't associate yourself. Don't associate yourself. You see, you can come from a family that your father was explicitly wicked and he leaves something as patrimony. There are things you can reject. The things you just reject. I don't want this. I separate myself. If I make any sense, let me see your hand. You see, this truth, do you know the first sin and the sin that brought humanity down was about eating something? Nidia Inua. Eve was asked to eat. That things you don't have to eat in order to separate yourself from something. Because there is a food that associates you and lumps you up. You are separated. Yeah. You see, a man came to Jesus and asked Jesus, tell my brother to share my father's properties, my father's estate with me. And Jesus did something very unusual. Jesus was not in the habit of being nasty to people. Just didn't let him learn. Tell you, who, who appointed me? <laughs> who, told you I, who told you I have such an appointment to, to meddle and get involved in the affairs of your father? And do I even know what your father has left for you? Do I even know whether what your father has left for you is what will kill you early? Whatever it is in your family that will kill you early, I separate you from it. So God told Moses, separate. Tell, tell the, or the assembly, move away. And I speak to your destiny. In any area of involvement that could bring you the death that God did not write. There are too many people who die and it was not their time. Don't let anybody lie to you. There are many things God permits, but it's not his will. The reason is because God has given you a choice to make. If you choose to associate with death, you will die. Too many things happen 
God permits, but it is not the will of God. Any kind of death in your family life, in your personal life, that God has not written down, but by association was coming to you, I separate you in the name of Jesus. The will of God is that the living and the dead shall not be found together. That's the foundation. Be seated. Because it is true, it is true for you. God told Moses, the living and the dead shouldn't be together, separate. Did you hear now? Very clear. God is saying, the living and the dead shouldn't stay together. For the two are going separate ways. So he said, the rest of the assembly, your time has not yet come. This is not your portion. But if you don't separate yourself, you shall go with them. Now, did you hear that? When the scripture says, come out of them. Association is powerful. For good and for evil. Be careful. Be careful. Association is very powerful. God says, no, separate. Which means, if you don't separate, though it is not your own, but you shall take it. You shall not take it. Stand up, lift up your hands, and say, I shall not take it. That which God has not given me, I shall not take it. Speak it, that which God has not given me, I shall not take it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. The trumpet is growing louder. And destiny is responding. It is a command. And when God is involved, everything stands. Everything obeys. I'm so sure of that one. Moses got up and went to Dathan and Abiram in verse 25. And the elders of Israel followed him. He warned the assembly. I am warning you. He warned the assembly. And I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Young women and young men. <laughs> Check your circle. Every day, somebody is being taken for ritual sacrifice. Young beautiful girls disappear are uh, unaccounted for. Young boys in the, on campus, they disappear, not counted for. By association, they enter into call. Some of them beaten to death and buried in shallow graves. You see, assembly like this is assembly of life. It's the best thing that can happen to you. Pray that your husband will be a, a husband found in assembly of life. Pray that your wife will be a wife found in the assembly of life. Because there is an assembly that destroys. I release you. Yeah. From every involvement with the assembly that will kill you. Yeah. I say you are released. Yeah. I set up a quarrel that will never be resolved between somebody here and a friend that will destroy your life. God told Moses, tell them all to separate themselves. And Moses went. Oof. Verse 27, so they moved away in verse 27. Moses having warned everybody, say, move away. Verse 27 says, so they moved away. So you are moving away. Yeah. Spiritually, you are programmed away. Yeah. Life begins in the spiritual. Law. What we are doing here is real. Somebody here where you will have visited, you will wake up that day and you will not know why, but you will not visit. A visit that will have taken your destiny. Every helper 
that is actually a destroyer clothed in a garment of a helper by this announcement and the trumpeting you are walking away separated in verse 28 Moses started addressing those people and talking to the assembly And in verse 31, the scripture says, as soon as he finished saying all this, the ground under them split apart. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them with their households. This is what hurts me. Households. Women. Children that were not involved. They just died by association. This is where the point is. Household. It was Dethan, Korah, and Abiram. These guys and some other men, about 250 or so. Their women, they were just there at, in their tents. Their children playing around. But because their fathers, their husbands, had embraced death by association they died will you imagine the cries of innocent children but God permitted them to go down be careful about ancestral issues be careful what you do now as a father be careful what you do now as a man whether it's in politics or business because there may come a day that an innocent child is crying into the grief an innocent woman is crying in a labor world and nobody can help because of what has been done. Will you stand up and lift up your two hands? Say, Father, by mercy and grace, separate me by the power of your mercy. Separate me from every association of death that I know nothing about. Pray for one minute. Praise the Lord. Separate me. Separate my husband. Separate my wife. Separate my children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, I forbid that an innocent woman will cry into a grave that she does not deserve. I stand in the gap by the administration of grace. That no child that is under this roof will cry into a grave that he knows nothing about. In the name of Jesus, I pray that no woman here will cry with her baby into a grave she knows nothing about. In the name of Jesus, lift up your throat and shout, Father, say, break me. And I cry into your spirit in prophecy. You are separated in the name of Jesus. This word is ringing in every coven. This word is traveling around every altar that is associated with your roots and foundation. Altars in workplaces, in offices, in marketplaces. Altars of social organizations and associations are ah, every altar that was designed in that collaboration to bury you. This word is announcing separate, 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 separate. In the marine world, it is shouting separate. separate. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. If you read further, that's the Numbers chapter 16. If you read further, the people of Israel, God disenchanted, broken, and they started another rebellion. He said, Moses, you have killed God's people. You have killed God's people. We are tired of you. 
You see, they were still revolting against Moses. Revolting against Moses means they were revolting against God. For Moses represents. You know what Moses went through to come to that point? You know the argument? Moses didn't want it. It's not like something he lobbied for. And so God had told him, I will be with you. Remember, in Exodus chapter 3, God had promised him and assured him of his presence. And so when they revolted against this man, God had a duty, an obligation to show up. They revolted. And they made a covenant with another form of death. <laughs> hmm. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me about death. Issues people have because of the place of worship. <laughs> who told you there are, not many, that there are not many people who go to early grave because of place of worship? You see, what you will observe in every denomination, the devil is interested in turning a place of worship into a place of human interest and intrigues. Where people forget God's interest and his presence and they focus on themselves. That's the greatest attack of Satan in the church. And so instead of going to receive blessing, they take early grief away. Lift up your two hands. Say, Father, separate me by your mercy from the grief that is taken from the place of worship. Lift up your tongue and say, Father, every death associated with the place of worship separate me, separate me from every death in the name of Jesus Christ. I have seen how people that God has brought together to serve him, all they do is to create or make a covenant of dying early. Grace family forever will never be. Will never be. This assembly will not be a place where people fashion the covenant of death. It shall not be. Your association here in whatever form will not bring death. Stand up and agree with me. Say, I agree. My association here shall not be a matter of death. It shall be forever a matter of life. Join your hand with somebody and pray that prayer. Join your hand with somebody, pray that prayer. My association here is separated from death. The next day, the whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron who have killed the lost people, they said. But when the assembly gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron and turned towards the tent of meeting, suddenly the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared. Then Moses and Aaron went to the front of the tent of meeting and the Lord said to Moses, get away, get away from this assembly. Get, did you hear that? He said, get away means separate yourself. Even Moses was asked to separate himself. He said, get away. Say, get away. Get away. So I can put an end to them at once. And they fell face down. Then Moses said to Aaron, take your censer and put incense in it, along with fire from the altar, and hurry. Say, hurry to the assembly to make atonement for them. That is, while I stay here to beg, go there. Wrath has come out from the Lord. The plague has already started. So Aaron did as Moses said. Oh. And ran into the midst of the assembly. The plague had already started among the people. But Aaron offered the incense and made atonement to them. He stood between the living and the dead. Aaron was the high priest, the first high priest. Jesus came as the real high priest. Association with Jesus 
offers you opportunity to have one standing between the living. You can see separation. It is the high priest that comes and stands between the living. Somebody is holding hand with death, but it separates, it stands between. It's a no, no connection. When he rose from the dead, that is exactly what he did. And so when the angel said, no, why do you look for the living among the dead? By his separation from the dead, he has separated his own people from the dead. That's why going to church, just going to church without Jesus in salvation is the greatest folly, the greatest experiment in destruction. It is a bad experiment. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a covenant partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank, Zenith Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 101-42-978-63. For inquiries, please call 81 804 33 to all our covenant partners and friends, we we'll say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080 46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.